Hi, it's Gilbert and Johnny Ann from Better Together Ministries. We uh, currently oversee the married couples ministry. We just uh, wanted to take some time to encourage uh, all the married couples out there. We uh, really miss you guys and we look forward to when we can be together again. One of the reasons we uh, called the, the ministry Better Together is that we took it from Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 11. So I'm gonna have my wife go ahead and read that scripture. Hi family, here we go. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Yeah, so we just, uh, that's what we came up with that uh, slogan, better together. I know right now, during this time, we kind of wonder being better together if that's it's not real easy right now but uh, hopefully with some of these encouraging notes that we have we'll uh, share them with you one of the things that the commentator said is in this scripture was holding together against the cold and right now there seems to be a lot of cold going on and um, we're truly blessed to have somebody in your life that you can uh, just share this time with so that's uh, what we want to do right now and uh, a lot of things that we'll be sharing with today um, come from a study that we did with Paul Tripp from What Did You Expect? So we'll be quoting from quite a few of those things. And just a great study. We wrapped it up in January. We ended up doing a 10-month study with that. So we just want to encourage you guys with some of the things that we learned from that. Again, with that, with Paul Tripp, you can go to his uh, website, paultripp.com backslash marriage. There's a lot of great notes there, too. So... Um, the one thing we want to start with was prayer. Um, one of the things we find is getting in touch with the Lord and really allowing the Lord to open my heart in order to allow Him to teach Gilbert what He wants to teach. So many times it's very easy to make it about Johnny Ann and it's, it's, that's, that's really not what it's about in a sense. What's the Lord teaching me through our marriage or even what's going on right now? One of the things that Paul Tripp said, it's, it's, it's for me. It's not for my spouse. Another way he kind of put it is, listen for you. Don't listen for your spouse. It's very easy for me to, to look at Johnny Ann or even just hear a message and then go back and say, wow, this Johnny Ann needs to listen to this because this really kind of really points to her. But it's, it, it's, that, it's opening the heart and allowing the Lord to minister to me and said, no, 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 Gilbert, here's what I want you to do in your marriage. It's not always a, very easy to receive, but... Um, it's very rewarding when we open our hearts and allow the Lord to, to teach us what he wants to teach. And Romans 8, 12 says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. So right now I've been thanking God <laughs> so much for my hope in him and that he's got this in control. And I'm just so praising him for that. And I'm trying to be patient. And I know that I am capable because the Lord has equipped us, all of us with the Holy Spirit to do that. And in these days, I seem to be in constant prayer. And because the Lord has settled us down and um, I would say just quieted us, be still, I'm homebound. Um, the prayer is really, I can't ignore the things the Lord has been wanting to talk to me about. Um, and so I have to repent, pray, thank Him that He loves me so much that He wants me to change so that I could be a better wife. I could be better to my family. And so for that, I'm just very, very thankful. With that said, marriage is God's idea. My marriage is God's idea. My marriage is created by God. And if my marriage is God's creation, then my marriage does not belong to me. It belongs to Him. So with that said, it's so many times we look at our, our, our marriage and it's like, okay, Lord, um, what am I getting out of this? And, and that's not really the thing. It's... It's looking at my own heart and how am I, um, what am I bringing into the, to the relationship. One of the things that Paul Tripp says is he says, all marriage problems are a heart problem. And there's so much truth to that. Your response is not caused by your spouse. It's caused by your heart. So with, let's put that in, in, in easier terms. So my response to Johnny Ann is not caused by Johnny Ann. My response is caused by my own heart. And it's so many times... It's at that moment that the Lord's exposing my heart. He's revealing whether it was harsh words because we're going through something, but it wasn't Johnny Ann that caused that. It was the Lord revealing what's inside my heart and allowing me to repent and ask the Lord to help me with that. And again, it, it definitely reflects um, 
the amount of time that I've spent with the Lord because the way I treat Johnny Ann in the midst of whatever we're going through it it's very easy to see if I'm applying grace being a tool of grace is one of the things that Paul Tripp talked about and it's like I have been chosen to be that tool of grace for Johnny Ann she's going to be going through different things and it's like in my prayer time if the Lord's preparing me that she's about to go through something then during the time that she's going through that I have already been prepared by the Lord to be that tool of grace of whether it's just um, holding her or asking her, how can I help you as you're going through this? Um, but again, that doesn't come natural because Gilbert's about Gilbert. And it's and unless it's the Holy Spirit that's, that's preparing me, then I, I'm going to miss it. One of the things that uh, Paul Tripp also says is the DNA of sin. And what it really is itself is really selfishness. Um, Gilbert wants what Gilbert wants because Gilbert loves himself. But it's one of those things where it's, 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 it's a selfishness and it's something that the Lord is calling me to die to. And with his help, that's when I'm able to hear Johnny Ann's heart or Johnny Ann's cry as to what's, what's going on in her life. The Lord is also talking to me about how we're talking about dying to self. It's not about Johnny Ann. It's about Gilbert and it's us being that living sacrifice. And the Lord has given us the ability to totally do that. And in the study, we also learned cruciform, which the word they use and mean to love willingly and um, self-sacrificially. So I thought that was really um, a great reminder that we are called to live a, a sacrificial life and it's pleasing to the Lord. And um, so there were some notes from um, the study. It's called Concrete Descriptions of Love. So I'm going to read a, um, a few of them to you. Love is actively fighting the temptation to be critical and judgmental toward your spouse while looking for ways to encourage and praise. Love means be willing, when confronted by your spouse, to examine your heart rather than rising to your defense or shifting the focus. And right now, it can, it can be very easily done. And love is a daily commitment to grow in love so that the love you offer to your husband or wife is increasingly selfless, mature, and patient. And love is always being willing to ask for forgiveness and always being committed to grant forgiveness when it is requested and love is speaking kindly and gently even in moments of discouragement refusing to attack your spouse's character or assault his or her intelligence and just a few more love is staying faithful to your commitment to treat your spouse with appreciation respect and grace even in moments when he or she doesn't seem to deserve it or is unwilling to reciprocate Love is willingness to make regular and costly sacrifices for the sake of your marriage without asking anything in return or using your sacrifices to place your spouse in debt. Last one, love is refusing to be self-focused or demanding, but instead looking for specific ways to serve, support, and encourage, even when you are busy or tired. That's good. And it's amazing as we were doing this study. I mean, it was one of those studies that just really, it, it, it brings you to where it's, it's a relationship between you and the Lord. It's not Johnny Ann and myself. It's her with her time spent with the Lord and myself and my time spent with the Lord. Okay, so with that said, we want to kind of wrap this up with there is hope. You know, um, and that's in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. One of the, the verbiages that was on there was that I came to rescue you you from you but i changed the you that he came to rescue me from me mm -hmm. it's it's not johnny ann it's 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 myself it's my heart that he's revealing to me and during these times that um the ugliness is coming out the lord is revealing it's like okay Gilbert, I, I want you to turn that over to me so that's where our hope is it's in him and in uh second corinthians uh 5 uh, 14 through 15 well, johnny ann go ahead and read that again okay it says for the love of christ compels us because we judge this that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. And I would just also want to say that we need to guard our hearts and our minds and protect our marriages. And that's through the word. And it's practicing gratitude. And that gratitude is joy. And just finding right now, there's so many things to be joyful about. But we get the ability to find those mysteries and treasures to do that and again in that scripture we see we're no longer living for ourselves but we're living for him who died for us and, uh, and rose again and even during this time where 
uh, we're celebrating celebrating the the resurrection of the Lord. It's mm-hmm. it's um, what a great time and a reminder that we are living for Him during these times. And going back to the very beginning, we are unable to do any of this without the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, we live in a, I mean, just again, just dying to self and allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal that. And then when He does reveal it, repenting and asking the Lord. And even asking your mate, hey, uh, I just want to say, forgive me. You know, I've, you know, and even our children, because right now our children are going through a lot of things. And it's it's a great time to go to them and say, you know, I'm sorry I was harsh with my words or um, I flew off the handle. And it's a, it's a great time to to show that forgiveness and, and also to ask for forgiveness as parents and, uh, um, you know, spouses to one another. Um, just want to close in prayer and then uh, we'll go from there. Lord, we just thank you again, Lord, for this beautiful day you created, Lord, and we thank you that you hold all things. Lord, we lift up marriage before you, Lord, and so many couples that are struggling. We pray that even as they see this video, Lord, you would receive the glory. They would not see Johnny Ann or myself, Lord, but that they would see you and you alone to your glory, Lord. And uh, thank you again in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. If you need prayer, um, at the very top of this uh, page, there's a link there that says prayer. Just go ahead and click on there. And um, you can have people praying for you. All right. God bless you guys. And keep praying for our ministry. We appreciate that. We miss you. See you soon. God bless.